The next module that we are going to talk about is the mesh module. The process of assigning mesh attributes to the model, such as seeds, mesh techniques, and mesh density is feature-based. And we specify them in this module. We generate the mesh, refine the mesh, and improve the mesh quality. What is seeding? Allow you to adjust the mesh density in selected regions. The deviation factor is the measure of the amount of de deviation of the sides of elements from the size of the original geometry. You can create and control seeds using the seed menu in the mesh module main menu bar. Because we enter the model as dependent in the assembly module, we have to put it in part mode and perform the meshing operation. Here you have to specify the global size of seeds. To avoid the problem of inadequate seeding around small curved features, we should activate curvature control when we want to seed a part, a part instance or edges. The number you enter here for a minimum size control represents the minimum size of the fraction of the global seed size. To seed an edge by prescribing the number of elements, you should select Seed Edges. Abacus prompts you to select regions you want to seed. From the local seeds dialog box that appears, you can choose between two options, by size and by number. As their name is meaningful, the by size is for defining mesh elements by entering their size, and by number means that you should enter the total number of elements that you want. For prescribing biased seeding along an edge, you should choose one of these options. The size of the coarsest and finest element along the edges or the number of elements. And the ratio of the two sizes can be used to establish a non-uniform distribution of elements along specified edges. A single bias that affects the mesh density can be defined from one end of the edge to the other. Here we can flip the bias direction as well as the minimum and maximum size. The next tool is assigning mesh controls. The mesh controls dialog box allows you to specify the shape of the elements such as hex and tet in a mesh, as well as the meshing technique such as structured and sweep that Abaca CAE uses to create the mesh. Our region is three-dimensional, so we can just choose between these element shape options. Hex uses exclusively hexahedral elements. Hex dominated use primarily hexahedral elements, but allows some triangular prisms in transition regions. Tet use exclusively tetrahedral elements, wedge use exclusively wedge elements. The structured meshing technique generates structured meshes using a regularly shaped region, such as a square or a cube, onto the region's geometry you want to mesh. By sweep technique creates a mesh on one side of the region. Bottom-up meshing relaxes the constraint that ties the mesh to the geometry so that you can build a hexahedral mesh that ignores some geometric features. Free meshing, which is deactivated here, is unstructured and allows more flexibility than structured meshing. If you choose the medial axis algorithm and we have a complex region, the abacus will mesh the model by medial axis. This decomposes the region to mesh into a group of simpler regions and then uses structured meshing techniques to fill each simple region with elements. 
The advancing front method generates quadrilateral elements at the boundary of the region and continues to generate quadrilateral elements as it moves symmetrically to the interior of the region. So we select these four edges to define seats by size. and define the size of other elements by entering the global size and finally generate the mesh. As you can see, the seed edges are created on these edges and they are getting smaller from beginning to the end of the edge. As you see, elements become finer from this edge to the curved edge. The next module is optimization. You use the optimization module to create an optimization task that contains the definition of your optimization. In addition, you can have a design response which is a single scalar value that is extracted from an optimization. You can create an objective function that defines the objective of the optimization and refers to the value of a design response or a combination of design responses. Also, you can create constraints de defining the changes in the abacus topology. Optimization module can apply to the topology or the model shape during the optimization. You can create a geometric restriction that places restrictions on the changes. The Abacus Topology Optimization Module can make the model's topology. Last but not least, creating a stopping condition is another measure that you apply in this module. It actually indicates that the optimization has converged to a solution. The next module is Job. We can create a job or an input file here. The user subroutine file icon is for importing the subroutine file to your simulation and we will explain it in advanced packages. The Write Input option in the Job Manager window is to write an input file in your Working Directory folder. The Data Check option is for checking data if there are some missing parts or some other errors. Submit option is for submitting the input file to Kernel to solve the problem. Continue option will be available during the job is processing. Try not to name your job the default name of the Abacus software. Instead, name the jobs uh, meaningfully in order to prevent overwriting files. The job type can be full analysis. Recover, which is available only in explicit simulations and is for the time 
that the desired process has been stopped. Restart is for when the analysis should use data from previous analysis of a specified model. In the Edit Job window, Use the Submission tab to configure the job's basic attributes, such as Job Type, Run Mode, and Submit Time. The General tab is for configuring preprocessor printout and for specifying a scratch and subroutine directory. In the Memory tab, you can define the amount of memory allocated to an Abacus analysis. Customize the parallel execution of an Abacus analysis task using the Parallelization tab, such as the number of processors to employ the parallelization mechanism. The last tab, the Precision tab, is to specify either single or double precision for Abacus explicit analysis. We submit the job and observe the analysis processing on the monitor page. In the visualization module, you can see the results of your simulation. By clicking on the uh, superimpose plot options, we can display the uh, undeformed shape together with the deformed shape. We want to change the scale of a factor to 1 to see the real deformation of our model. You can change the appearance of the model by selecting one of the visible edges options. You can animate your model by selecting this option and changing the frame rate by using this slider tool. You can have access to output results by selecting this option. ODB History Output enables you to see the outputs on diagrams. Furthermore, in the Outputs database, you can read XY data from field output. From this tab, you can select uh, any variable you want to see its results. For example, S11 stress on the X phase and X direction and E11. You should choose the desired element from here. For example, we choose this element. By clicking on the plot button, you can see the strain and stress graph over the step time. You can have different operations on plots by the Operate on XY Data option. For example, the Combine function will plot the stress corresponding to strain. There are multiple options in this module that you can learn about them in other packages. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. This is a small part of the Abacus for Beginners training package. 
There is a lot more valuable information in other parts of this package that you can get on our website. We suggest you do your project by saving your time and getting basic in training so that you don't get tired of Abacus errors.